Twisted Sister founder J.J. French has one of the most interesting stories in rock you've probably never heard. From his days as a high school activist to playing in one of the most popular bands of the 80s, he's learned a lot. He's sharing it in his new book, Twisted Business, Lessons Learned from My Life in Rock and Roll, and J.J. French joins us live. Good morning. Well, man, so let me see. The opening acts are Flying Beavers and William Shatner. Okay. <laughs> hey, so, uh, hey. You're welcome. New, I, reached, I don't know if that kind of gets close to the fact that we opened up for a chimp once, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, which is in the book. I described that we actually played with a performing chimp who actually went over better than we did. That is in the book. So please buy the book and read about it. Let me, let me see if I've got this straight. You, were, as a kid... Were you a Boy Scout and a drug dealer? Were they different uh, times? No, Usually those no, things don't go no. together. Well, if you follow a timeline of Boy Scouts, it leads from Boy Scouts to drug dealing to transvestitism. So I don't know if we can draw a direct line. <laughs> right. uh, no, listen, I don't want to hear anything from the Boy Scouts of America. I was a Boy Scout. I had 22 merit badges. You know, it just didn't work out for me. Uh, but yeah, I started out as a Boy Scout and selling cookies. Believe it or not, we did sell cookies. People think Girl Scouts just sell cookies. It was what Boy Scouts did. And that's how I raised money to uh, buy my first guitar. And that is also detailed in the book, which was the like, first business deal that I ever did. So Twisted Sister was known to be this no drugs, no alcohol band, right? And yet you, did you make that transition? Didn't just get out of drugs? And how did it become what it was? Well, this is a very personal thing for me. I, I grew up in the 60s. I was born in 1952, so I was the bullseye hippie generation. And, and of course, everything that involved hippies from 1967 to 1972 was me, and it was me getting involved in politics and, and, and drugs and rock and roll, and it was a great time to do it. But uh, by 1972, the whole flower power thing that existed in the hippie culture just fell apart and became uh, basically a heroin-infested heroin -infested nightmare. And so I had to wake up one morning and basically see that all the people around me were either being junkies, or were junkies, were dying of ODs, or being murdered. And I had to make a choice. And the choice was to completely stop doing it, which I did on Easter Sunday in 1972. And that was the last time I had done, I did drugs. And I actually just stopped cold turkey. This is a, tr it is true. Um, I, and then, of course, uh, I said to my mother, well, the good news is I, I don't do drugs anymore. However, the bad news is I think I want to be a cross-dressing transvestite uh, <laughs> in a rock band. So I don't know what she thought was worse, but that kind of led me into Twisted Sister. I was the last original member in the in the first lineup, and as the book details, there was eleven lineups before the lineup that made it with D. Snyder, who looks like Sarah Jessica Parker did in a vat of acid, as we all know. <laughs> uh, my my my, uh, my my singer, who's an amazing singer, frontman, songwriter, <laughs> incredible guy. But it took a long time to evolve into that, and the book goes into detail as to how that happened and why the band was straight, because there was really no room for for drugs and alcohol to me in a successful. Yeah business and rock is a business so you went from uh, maybe a musician who may have been a better fit for for the grateful dead but you go to this other kind of genre is that because it, it was that the deadhead stuff wasn't interesting without the drugs or was you just saw more commercial potential on, on, on the hairband thing well, it was interesting. I'd seen The Dead 27 times, uh, 26 times on acid. The 27th time I went straight, it was probably the worst band I ever heard in my life. <laughs> no, I, 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 I really shouldn't say I'm actually becoming, I'm actually friends with, with those guys. And I, I appreciate what they did, but I did a transition. It was the glitter thing really came in in 72, and I made a full transition over and left the whole Allman Brothers, Grateful Dead, hippie scene, film more East uh, scene uh, in the past and moved forward into the latest David Bowie, Lou Reed, Mata Hoople, T-Rex, kind of thing and that's that's where the transition occurred we i remember d snyder has been on our show and he has said he wrote like a christmas song that celine dion recorded and he calls it the song that celine's song built my house in california or something like that i'm curious your band you own the rights to the name twisted sister when we hear we're not going to take it in every commercial do you guys get checks every time we hear that you bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome! So that okay. is a now, testament. But, but, but let me let me but let me be clear too. We also um, we also re-recorded our hits, and 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 this is what we do. I mean, th there's a long-term vision in this thing, and the book really goes into it. I hate to be, you know, people don't really attach pragmatism, long-term playing to rock and roll. You know, they think it's just sex, drugs, rock and roll, and fairy dust. You know, or the way Keith Richards describes the dim difference in him and Mick Jagger is that Mick Jagger wakes up every morning and says, "What am I?" 
I doing today, five days from now, five months from now, five years from now? And Keith goes, I woke up this morning. You know? <laughs> yeah. So most people think it's that. But in the case of Twisted Sister, there was a lot of thinking and a lot of business because the guys really were focused on it. And 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 good for them because it allowed D and me, me from the business side, D from the creative side, to kind of chart a path to make this thing happen. But it is a path. And the pathway is the Twisted Method, which is described in the book, T-W-I-S-T-E-D, Tenacity, Wisdom, Inspiration, Stability, trust, excellence, and discipline. Believe it or not, there is a, a focused reason why the band succeeded. Wow. And I'm sure it had something to do with someone being clear-headed and you guys thinking it's, it, it'd be great if to have a business plan, but you also have to have the hits, right? Well, you have to have both. Yeah. And of course, you know, we went a lot of hits and misses. We were turned down more times than the bed sheet and came back more <laughs> times than Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers <laughs> and, you know, and Jason Voorhees. So yeah. coming, coming back from constant rejection, look, you guys, we are all in the entertainment business. Is there a more rejection business based business than the business that we are in right. the answer is no we always have to reinvent ourselves i mean that's really the key to surviving especially the entertainment business but it also applies to absolutely everything in life and all your life i mean you reinvent yourself from the minute you go to school the first day of school you put on new clothes and you go this year it's going to be different i'm going to be different well twisted sister you know went through that whole period where we were constantly being turned down we had to come back time after time so the band that made it in 1984 already had 12 years behind it i have all the shows we played in the book we did or i did because i go back to 1973 uh 9,000 performances you know so i mean if you don't learn something after 9,000 times you're in the wrong business and uh, we actually became great because we re we repeated over and over and over again and we just kept coming back more and more and more until we got it right and luckily we were able to get it right well know. it's called twist this business Le lessons learned from my life in rock and roll jj french thanks for being with us thank you listen man love you love chicago great restaurants and a great town and no scaffolds on the building